People have been saying that health is the best stat to get in Rise of Kingdoms for a long time now, but today we're going to talk about if that is still the case. The reason that I'm asking if this is still the case is because the discussion around attack versus defense versus health started back in June of 2020. Well, it's been going on for longer than that, but that's around the time that Chiskel made his video talking about the three different stats. And then in December of 2020 is when Wick Game started talking about this as well to give you guys an idea of how long ago that was in rise of kingdoms William wasn't even in the game yet when we first started talking about health being the best stat and a lot has changed since William was first added into the game I mean not only did we get even more insane commanders like Nevsky like CPO like Boudica but we also got an entire iconic system for our equipment which alters the base stats of your units and on top of all of that we still have the formation system that's coming out very soon which is going to give us even more ways that we can add stats to our units so i think it's time that we revisit the idea of health being the best stat in the game and kind of break this down a little bit for the end game players who want to have a little bit of a better idea as to why health is so good and later in the video i'm going to share with you an example of an army that people use really often that might actually be worse off with the gatekeeper shield that everyone keeps putting on it now with that being said before we can discuss the importance of health versus defense versus attack we have to understand how damage is calculated on a per turn basis in rise of kingdoms so i have the formula up on the screen here this is not the exact formula okay i want to make that very clear the exact formula for rise of kingdoms as far as i know hasn't been revealed by lilith ever that's for a couple of reasons one it's for competitive advantage i think that lilith wouldn't want that formula to be out there but players have sort of gotten really really close to approximating the exact battle formula what we have on the screen here is an even more simplified version of the battle formula that people use in different calculators and spreadsheets for example but this simplified version of that battle formula i think gets the point across pretty well so what we can understand from this simplified formula is that the amount of damage factor that you deal which is shown on the left is going to be determined by how many units you have multiplied by the base attack of your units divided by the base defense of the opponent's units multiplied by their base health for a simplified version of the formula that still sounds pretty complex but let me explain for my tier 5 throwing axemen which is my infantry units for France you could see that the base attack is 221 the base defense is 212 and the base health is 227 off on the right here you can see green numbers and this is the amount that the white number is increased by based on the passive buffs of your city and technology you can arrive at this number by coming into your city hall you can see under the military buffs here that my infantry attack grand total is 146 percent so if you take the base out of 221 and you multiply it by 1.46 you're going to get 322. Now adding these two numbers together isn't that useful because this green number doesn't take into account any of your commander's skills that give you extra stats. It doesn't take into account any of the talents. It doesn't take into account any of the equipment. And so these green stats here really aren't that useful for determining what your actual attack, defense and health are going to be in any given battle you can get a slightly better idea of what your stats would be by going into your troop deploy page and clicking the more button and this will give you a breakdown of everything that is passively occurring in your city so all of like your vip and all of your technology kvk tech all that stuff and it also adds on top of that the skills of your commanders as well as your talents at least some of the talents and also um your equipment now this isn't perfect either because if we take a look at a commander like cpo we can see that on his third skill it says that it increases infantry units health by 20 percent when attacking troops so when we go to deploy cpo over here out into the open field he is not attacking troops if he's just standing here and so the buffs that it shows you on the commander deploy page are what the passive buffs are going to be so right now i do not have that plus 20 percent infantry health but once i start attacking this barbarian i will and so that's one of the reasons why it's not perfect to look at the commander view 
page, but it's better than referring to the green numbers shown in your barracks. Now, if we take a look back at that damage formula, there's a couple things that we have to take into account here. The first is that this is how you're dealing damage to the enemy and also how the enemy is dealing damage to you. And in any given turn, there is both an attack and a counter attack if both of the armies are actually fighting one another. Now this changes if you're attacking an enemy that's running away because they are no longer attacking you. They're only dealing the counter attack damage. There's also skill damage that you have to take into account because if the enemy is running away, they're not gaining that rage and they're not launching any skill damage at your army. The reason that I mentioned that is because when we look at the damage formula, what we're really optimizing for is the trade, right? That is the trade. Of course, if you could have a billion percent attack on the top row there, then that means you're going to be dealing so much damage to the enemy that their March size is going to be reduced fast. And if their March size is reduced fast, they're going to be dealing less damage and therefore your defense and health are less relevant now there are diminishing returns here but again it really comes down to what do you want to do if all you want to do is deal massive amounts of damage and you don't care about your trade meaning all you care about is dealing massive damage then you could stack attack on your march and that's really what it's going to be of course you would want to pop a troop expansion you want to use the ancient stratagems right these are all ways that you can increase your march size which as you can see here is directly related to how much damage you're dealing so that's a tip for you if you're a mega whale where you don't care about troop losses and you only care about massive damage well then hey you could do whatever you want if you're cool with the healing down your hospital all the time then you can really punish the enemy even with those diminishing returns but for most of us what we care about is dealing the most amount of damage to the enemy while taking the least amount of damage back this is also known in you know if you look at like call of duty for example and i know this is not a great example but a lot of players don't talk about how many kills they get they talk about what their kill to death ratio is because it's the ratio that really shows how effective you are so in call of duty if you get 20 kills in a game you might say oh that's that's pretty good but if you got 40 deaths it's like oh actually you 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 died way more than than you killed right so it's the same thing in rise of kingdoms we're talking about a trade on a battle report you want to deal the most amount of damage to the enemy while mitigating the most amount of damage that you take and that's what most of us are optimizing for and that's why most people it's best to stack your health again if you're a mega well launching an insane rally and you just want the most amount of damage per second so you can guarantee a flag burn then maybe you do want to have a massive amount of attack on that rally if you don't care about it potentially getting swarmed or whatever it's also worth noting that if you are an army that is less likely to be targeted for example a pakal herald then maybe you can take that opportunity to stack a ton of attack on that march because the defense and health really are going to matter a lot less if nobody is hitting you of course you always take the counter attack damage but that's only like half of the formula so the nuance there is the reason that we're making this video but for the sake of this video let's assume that you do want to optimize for the best trades because that's what most players should do because it's not about the battle it's about the war and the war is won by players who get the best trades for a long period of time so in order to determine if health is still the best stat in the game with all these new commanders new systems iconic crystals and all that let's take a look just briefly back at the base stats for our units okay one thing that you're going to notice is that uh, even though again the, the green number isn't great here but in general right this is just your your general stats it seems to be the case that health is always going to be the lowest even though my white number here the health is the highest it's getting the least amount of buffs and you can see that again by going into your city hall and one thing we'll notice is we get 146 percent infantry attack we get 103% infantry defense and we get 69% a of infantry health. And that's not just the case for infantry. You could see my cavalry and my archers, they have less health as well. And the reason for this is because there's just less health to be gained from things like technology. For example, you see my personal technology for my research center gives me 40% health. But if we take a look at defense, we get 70%. And the same is also true for attack, but attack also gets crystal technology bonus as well. So we can see based on all of that, that health seems to be the, the hardest stat to get your hands on. And 
so for the last two years what we've been discussing as content creators and as other players in the community uh, is that if you can get extra health you probably should get it because more times than not uh, it's going to be the one that you have the least of taking a look back at the formula here if we take a look at your defense times your health okay we want that bottom number to be as high as it can be so that way when we're taking damage we are mitigating the most amount of damage that we possibly can so let's use an example of a, a unit who has 200 base defense and we're multiplying it by 200 base health meaning in this instance you have the same amount of health as you have defense in that example we have 40,000. that's the resulting number this is just an example this is a, a meaningless number just to show you how the math actually works but let's say for example that instead of 200 defense you actually have 210 defense and you're multiplying that by 190 health so in this instance it's still the same total right 200 plus 200 is 400 210 plus 190 is 400 but here in this example if we do the math we can see the number is actually lower and so because of that that is why you want your defense and your health to be as close as they possibly can be and with health being the hardest stat to get it's almost always going to be lower so point for point it's almost always going to be better to get a point of health and keep in mind too that there is a 10 percent defense boost here as an item you can literally just spend gems to get 10 percent extra defense so realistically at the end of the day even if you get all of these things it's close as close as possible to one another you still can instantly add 10 percent more defense and so having health slightly higher um then defense as a baseline it's still probably going to be about the same and best to go for health because you can just pop this and add more defense but the story doesn't really end there because the iconic system really changes base stats quite a bit and it's more than people probably think at face value because if you take a look at boots for example right um any boots that you add an iconic crystal to will always give you base health three three points of base health for whatever the troop type is that these boots specialize in so for example my shio's return gives me three extra base health points if this has a talent on it then it's actually going to be plus four base health points so what does that actually mean well if we go in here to our barracks and we take a look at this right here um we will see that if i added a army out into the open field with iconic uh, crystals on the equipment it would actually add to the white number here which is important because that white number is what's being multiplied by when we take a look at the the troop buffs here right that's what the 146 percent is multiplying and the reason that this kind of changes things a bit is because you actually have the opportunity to get more base health points through the iconic system than you do any other stat and the reason for this is because if we come into my gear here you'll see that your accessories also give you three extra base health stats so this is important because that means that with two accessories that's plus six or if you have talents on them that's actually plus eight and also your boots like we already talked about before give you plus three base health and legs will also give you plus three base health or plus four with the talent so what that means is these four down here if they're all legendary and they are all iconic crystalled okay that means you're gonna get 12 extra base health points whereas when we take a look at attack you only get attack base points from your weapon and your gloves you can show that over here i don't think i have any legendary weapons um and you gain defense points from your helmet and your chest so you can get a total of either six or eight with uh, iconics and talents of either attack or defense but you get double that for health so with the iconic system giving you more base health than anything it's possible that you can have armies that have a higher health value at the end of the calculation even if it's multiplied by a smaller number so let's talk about the example that i mentioned in the beginning of the video which is Scipio with Mehmed okay this is a really common open field pair because you have a ton of skill damage here Mehmed also gives you attack for your infantry and he gives you health as well on his museum you're also gaining health on your third skill on CPO which isn't reflected in this but we can assume that it will pretty much always be there because 
we're calculating how good of a trade you're going to get you're probably going to be fighting so i want you guys to remember these base stat numbers okay 212 defense 227 health so if we take a look at this march right we can assume that our infantry health is 141 percent because remember we're probably always going to be in a fight here so remember our base health is 227 and then we're going to multiply it by 141 percent which is 1.41 and that gets you 320. that is the amount that your health is increased in this army when you're fighting so you have to add that to your actual base because remember this is plus that percentage so the base is 227 and we have a total of 547 health now you'll notice that my infantry defense here is adding a higher percentage but if we take a look at the calculator we remember that our base health was 212 with the units that i'm using and we have to multiply that by 1.515 that is 151.5 percent and we get 321 and then we have to add our base health to that because it's adding that amount to our base and we get 533. so you'll see here that in this example we actually have more health than we do defense even though we have a higher defense number listed right here now this example gets even crazier if you take into account iconic crystals right because now you're increasing your base stats so if you have all four of your health pieces adding base health so that's your two accessories plus your boots and legs that means that i actually have 239 base health and we're going to multiply this by 1.41 which we already determined was our bonus health that we're getting on this march and that gets 336 plus 239 which is our new base health stat and we get 576 okay and again we can do the same thing with defense our defense would be 218 because we're getting plus six extra defense points one from our helmet one from our chest we're going to multiply that by 1.515 and then we're going to add the 218 again and we'll see that it's 548. so even with the iconic crystals because the iconic crystals give you more base defense or i'm sorry base health than anything else um, we actually have again a higher base health than we do base defense so in this example for this march that a lot of you are using there's a chance that it could be better to actually not use the blue shield on this march because if we take away the blue shield we will reduce our health by ten and a half percent uh, and then we can replace that with the soccer Fubuki and just deal more damage right now I want to be very clear that this battle formula the the bottom number is always going to no matter what happens if you increase that bottom number whether it's uh defense or health you're still going to help mitigate damage that you are taking it's just that there is diminishing returns so really the best value is the best ratio between the two which is getting them as close to one as possible is it bad to have more than one or the other no because you're still increasing that total number on the bottom it's just again with a diminishing return so i'm not saying that using the blue shield here is bad but i'm saying that on a march like this it you might consider using the sakura fubuki now this whole thing uh is is just a one example of why you may want to stray away from health and that it does depend on a per unit basis on a per civilization basis on a per army basis and remember this stuff doesn't even take into account all of the talents on my um on my cpo prime right which honestly the talents for for infantry it's just a couple of points in in both so it's not really going to make a massive difference but i think that if you are a fighter in rise of kingdoms and you're a, you're a crack and you're a whale you have massive massive amounts of of fighting that you do in the game it might be worth looking at your individual marches and deciding if you would rather have the blue shield on there or the soccer fubuki or another good example is if you take a look at nevsky right a lot of these pieces that i have the chest also the boots uh sorry the gloves navar's control and the boots uh and the legs are all giving cavalry health so we're actually stacking a ton of uh cavalry health here on this march on top of the fact that there's a 10 percent chance of getting health from nevsky's expertise and there's also 20 percent health outside of alliance territory so th this 20 percent of health and the 30 percent that you get with a 10 percent chance that is not reflected here 
in the um in the cavalry health calculation as well right and if i was a cavalry main i would probably have a cavalry health skin i would have a civilization that maybe gives cavalry health or has cavalry health as the highest base stat right so and this is another good example of um a commander that is extremely used and if you look at your own army right a lot of people are using joan of arc right now as a secondary to uh to nevsky and Joan of Arc Prime also is giving you 10% of um, cavalry health, right? And that's only on the map. So that's that might not be calculated in, in this here as well. So there are some marches where, you know, if you've been blindly stacking health for the past two years, as a rule of thumb, you're probably doing the right thing but there are there's a chance that you might actually want to change something right you might want to change a piece away from health to attack just to deal more damage right especially because attack if we look back at that formula attack is what is used to to calculate obviously your normal attack and counter attack but it's also used to calculate your skill damage output so we're looking at commanders like nevsky and we're looking at commanders like cpo right these are new commanders that came into the game within the last year and they're dealing more skill damage than ever right of course we've had ysg in the game for a while but um this places a new value on the attack stat because we're gaining more from increasing that attack now the final thing that i want to talk about here in this video right because i think i've explained as best i can why you might want to for some armies take a closer look at whether or not you need the 10 and a half percent of of health for the gatekeeper shield also ask yourself if you care about a good trade or if you really just want massive damage but the other thing that we have to consider is uh again we have to talk about cpo okay and i feel like i've talked a lot about cpo because he's he's so meta and he's very relevant to this discussion but the thing about cpo is that his aoe reduces the target health by 30 percent for three seconds that is a massive debuff for a good chunk of time and the thing about cpo prime is that he's one of the most common commanders that you will face in the open fields okay guan cpo is in my opinion the best open field um pairing in the game right now that's what that's how i think um because the aoe is insane the damage outputs insane the tankiness is good uh and the debuffs here are insane plus you gain rage it's just there's so much to love here okay but with Scipio being so common in the open fields it's worth noting that there's a high probability that at any given moment you may have this 30 percent health reduction inflicted on your army and so if you take the popularity of Scipio into account and you want to build your armies to counter the CPO meta, well, then we are back at square one. And that would be stacking health in the anticipation of having it reduced by 30% by the CPO. And I know that that sounds a little bit crazy, but really think about it. How often do you see CPO Prime in the open field? all the time and if you're in a massive murder ball there's a good chance that you're going to get hit by this health reduction now he does only hit three targets but again if there are 15 cpos in the open field all firing off their skill shots at different times that means 15 cpos can afflict 30 percent of health reduction on 45 different armies so even if you outnumbered the enemy um uh, three to one you still could all be inflicted by a health debuff so that's something that we have to take into account at least i think so i i think it's it's important to take cpo's active skill into account when building your armies and if you do uh then ironically you probably still want to stack infantry or health to any troop type that you might be using. Now, all of this is probably going to change slightly with the introduction of the formation system, which is going to add new ways to add more stats to all of your commanders. Uh, and so things are going to change once again, moving forward. But I just wanted to make this video because the other day I, I made a video talking about stacking health on an army just to see how high you could go. If you guys missed that, um, I'll go ahead and be linked in the description below. It was a really interesting video that I enjoyed doing but when I was experimenting with all those stats I was like wait a minute like there's actually a lot of ways that you can get health now to the point where you could be over stacking it and so I just wanted to talk about it in this video and give you guys a better understanding of the relationship between attack defense and health and why for some marches you might want to consider reducing the amount of health that you're adding onto it um but again as a rule of thumb I would say it's still best to add health 
to your armies where you can now guys there may be some miscalculations in this video i don't have everything 100 right we don't have the battle formula 100 correct right we're all simplifying things as best as we can while still trying to take a deeper dive into this and so if you see anything wrong with this video anything that is completely completely wrong um please do comment down below so that way i can understand things a little bit better and learn with you guys but i've done my best to explain this as thoroughly as possible while keeping it uh, as easy to understand as I can, which obviously means it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it's going to be as accurate as it can be to be useful. With that being said, if you enjoyed the video, drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kings video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.